Thank you very much for, for the invitation. Um, I'm really um, happy to be here and happy to, um, to share some of, sh some of my ideas. I don't know if they um, are um, revolutionary in any way. I don't think so. I think these ideas have circulated for a while. Um, my own background is um, I was trained as a, as a language teacher and like, like all of us, um, reality really um, m makes you challenge and makes you think about, um, you know, what you're actually doing and whether what you like much, because I've heard that principals discourage their teachers um, certainly to uh, use the first strategy and that is code switching, in other words switching from one language to another. Now um, this is a controversial issue, however I think that we can use code switching responsibly. We mustn't think of using code switching in the classroom like we do when we talk to, talk to one another. We have to think and plan very carefully how we use more than one language in the classroom. So we have to think in terms of strengthening terminology. I'm not talking about English language teaching here. I'm talking about teaching geography, mathematics, social studies, etc. through the medium of English. So we have to think very carefully when we plan um, which terms we're going to use in both languages. Or we have to think very carefully in terms of whether we want to start out in one language and then do a chunk in English and then end again in a home language. Or the other way around, start in English, do some explanation in a home language and then um, get back to, to English. This is, one, um, this is one way of using um, our teaching voices. But this needs to be supported by um, what people call co-languaging, which means using two languages in writing, um, specifically on, um, on the board or on a PowerPoint presentation, on posters or on worksheets. Um, in other words, we again focus on, on um, academic terminology and we actually contrast terminology in more than one language. By doing that, we strengthen those terms in more than one language and we also um, make it possible for learners to see how the, lang how the terms differ, how, what the spelling looks like, etc. Et Specifically, if you, look, if you think um, of Afrikaans and English, where sometimes the um, words might look very similar, if you, if you think of loan words, in Isikosa, for example, where you need to look at the spelling uh, um, as well. Because for me, the most important thing is to strengthen the use of English for uh, um, assessment purposes, for in the end, completing worksheets, writing tests, etc. It's not so important for me um, if I think of the English curriculum that um, learners are able to write a diary entry or things like that. Uh, for me, it's it's important that they are able to manage their academic subjects in English and specifically in reading and writing. Okay, so the, the final technique that I want to talk about um, is when your class is truly multilingual and um, you don't know all the languages or you've got only one language and your learners use a variety of languages. And for me, um, it's this. Um, so we all know that home, or, uh, home languages or community languages offer the best possibilities for learning. <clears throat> but it's also the case that the dominant languages, and in our case English, um, are often supposed or chosen by schools um, because of the perceived opportunities that they crea uh, create for further education. And the challenge for me is to convince people that there are responsible ways to use more than one language in the classroom so that learners build understanding in whatever language and then build proficiency in the use of English for assessment purposes. Thank you.